Magnitude software makes many ODBC and JDBC drivers for NoSQL data sources. Some of these data sources include MongoDB, Couchbase, and DynamoDB. ODBC and JDBC are both based on relational databases, whereas NoSQL data sources don't have a fixed schema or fixed types. This means the driver needs special functionality in order to translate between NoSQL and relational frameworks. Our drivers are automatically able to sample your data and create a mapping so that it can be used as rows and columns. We also ship all of our NoSQL drivers with a schema editor which allows you to customize this mapping to make sure that it fits your needs. Although the automatic mapping allows you to connect with your data right away, there are benefits to creating a permanent customized schema map. For automatic mapping, the driver has to sample your data on every connection. This takes time, especially if you have lots of data. Another thing is, based on the document sampled, the schema map will change over time. Creating a permanent map ensures consistent metadata. This means any reports or workflows you've created will continue to work. In this video, I'll show you how you can use our schema editor to create a schema map. This process is pretty much the same for any of our drivers, but there will be slight variations. I'll use our MongoDB ODBC driver to show you the schema editor functionality in this video. If you're using a JDBC driver, there will be a schema editor jar file that you can double click on to open the schema editor. For an ODBC driver, open your DSN in ODBC Administrator and click on the schema editor button. Click create a new schema definition and then click connect. You should now see a list of all the collections in your database and you can see options for sampling. You can choose to sample forwards or backwards, meaning starting at the end of the collection or the beginning. You can choose how many documents to sample and the sampling interval. Set your configuration options, check the collections you want to sample, and click sample. Note that only collections you sample will be available in the driver. The other ones will not be. After sampling, you'll see all the databases that were sampled. Expand that and you'll see the tables within each database. Here we have the person and the nested array tables. Let's look at the person table. This JSON document shows you the structure of the person table. You can see that there's a nested document address. Address has street, zip, and city fields. Looking at the schema editor, you can see that these are added to the parent document and are listed as address underscore street, address underscore city, and address underscore zip. The nested array document contains multiple levels of nested arrays. We can expand it to see all the levels. A virtual table is created for each array. Looking at the JSON document, we see an array called info, inside that an array called fake array, and that contains a phone numbers and an emails array. A virtual table is created for each of these. The child arrays are named based on the parent document underscore array name. If we click on the preview button, this will give us an example of the data, including any changes we've made using the schema editor. Each virtual table contains an ID column, which matches it to the parent document. There is also an index column for each level of the array. Often, you won't sample all of the documents in a collection. This means that certain attributes might be missed. If this is the case, you can click the Add Column button to add those attributes. You'll need to give it a name, as well as fill out the source name. If, for example, address sometimes included a state, we could add an, a value for state. Your choice of SQL type depends on the source type chosen. You can also choose to hide the column, and you'll need to fill in any of the values that don't have a default. You can also edit these attributes for columns that were already added. So for example, you could hide columns, you could change the SQL type, change names, or change other attributes. Additionally, you can rename tables and you can also hide tables. If we choose the person table and click preview, we can see the new address underscore date that was added. Also, if we click on the phone numbers table, 
we can see the name changes that we made there. Another thing you can do is move attributes from a nested array to the parent document. Just select the column and click Move to Parent. You'll have to say how many elements you want to move from the array up to the parent. If we click on Preview and scroll to the right, we can now see the new elements. Once you've finished customizing your schema map, you'll want to save it. There are two ways you can do this. In File, you can save it as a local JSON file, or if you, can, if you click on Connection, you can publish the schema map to the database. The advantage of publishing the schema map to the database is that then all users use the same map, so they see the same view of the data. After saving the schema file, you need to make sure you configure the driver to use it. For JDBC, double check the documentation on what you need to add to your connection URL. For ODBC, generally look under the advanced options and make sure that you're either using the local file you saved or that you're using the schema map in the database if you chose to publish it. Now you're ready to use the driver and have consistent metadata. If you ever need to make any changes, it's easy to open the schema editor and sample a new collection or add a new attribute. Have a look at the links below for information on connecting different data sources to different ODBC applications.